Good afternoon, friends. We will be discussing about UTM and UPS. First of all, why are we discussing about UTM and UPS, given the fact that we are attending a short term course on remote sensing? We have been talking about geography. We have been talking about computer science. The interdisciplinary area comes GIS. We have been talking about geographic information system also. As part of GIS, because GIS is an umbrella term, a number of things are included when we are talking about GIS. One of those things, one of the subdomains that we are discussing about is remote sensing. Further, under the heading of remote sensing, we have been talking about spatial data, non-spatial data, and uh, during the last three days, these two terms we have been hearing many times, spatial data as well as non-spatial data. Let me also add one more term, which, which is called aspatial data. The word spatial prefixed with the letter A. At, as such, there are many textbooks which say that there is no difference between spatial data and a spatial data, uh, sorry, uh, difference between non-spatial data and a spatial data. But uh, the terms like the ideas of the geographer, the beliefs of the geographer, the emotions of the geographer, these are the things which cannot be coded directly. Such terms are called a spatial data. Talking about uh, non-spatial data specifically, those are the things which are related with the characteristics or the properties or the attributes of some location. Naturally, we are coming to the point of location. When we are talking about location, immediately two things come into our mind. Number one is the absolute location and number two is the relative location. Obviously, absolute location is more precise and the relative location as has already been discussed in the last two days also, it is with reference to some other location. Locating something on Earth is really a challenging task given the fact that Earth is a huge body, very huge body, in fact. You can just imagine the magnitude of uh, the dimensions of the Earth given the fact that it has a diameter of 12,000 kilometers at equator and uh, minus 42 kilometers at the poles because it is flattened at the poles. And uh, the equator itself has... Uh, circumference of around 36,000, uh, 40,000 kilometer. So you can just imagine the magnitude of the body on which we are trying to locate something. Basically, the system that is used for locating anything uniquely on Earth is a grid system. And why does this word grid come into the picture? Because we want to locate anything on the Earth, we need two dimensions to the least. Number one will be obviously the X coordinate and number two will be the Y coordinate. The most common grid system, actually grid system again is an uh, umbrella term. Grid system, when we are saying grid system, it includes number of systems. One of those grid systems is the geographic grid. And geographic grid is nothing but what we commonly know as this grid system consisting of the latitudes and longitudes. Now we have one more grid system, which is not a geographic grid. Per se, because in a way we can say that it is also a geographic grid, but the term geographic grid is dedicatedly used for the system which are using latitudes and longitudes. We have a grid system which is based on latitudes and longitudes, but which is using the concept which is somewhat different from the conventional concept of latitudes and longitudes. That system is called the system of UTM and UPS. Now coming to UTM and UPS, the first question is, when we already have a system consisting of latitudes and longitudes, why to go with UTM and UPS? In fact, there are n number of reasons. I have listed down a few of them. Firstly, because we are talking about remote sensing, we need to know that all the remote sensing work consisting of the satellite, aerial imagery, topographic map preparation, natural resource database, and many others. In fact, uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, had uh, as part of that uh, treaty, all the countries who have signed that treaty, they have agreed that they will be using UTM and UPS as a, as a grid system. Besides, the US federal government is also using UTM and UPS. Additionally, uh, as per the Warsaw Pact, all the countries who have signed that pact also, they have also agreed that they will be using UTM and UPS. So the point is that UTM and UPS is quite a commonly used system. And that is why uh, that happens to be the first reason why we need to know about UTM and UPS. Obviously, in addition to the fact that the remote sensing systems are also using UTM and UPS. The second reason is that UTM UPS creates a rectangular grid. And how that rectangular grid is created and why it is not a typical 
polar type of grid or coordinate type of grid or circular kind of grid that we will just see the third reason is that uh, this system is based on ellipsoidal model and before i explain the term ellipsoidal model i have just used the phrase that this system uses ellipsoidal model and this takes me to another point of discussion that i am calling it a system friends we need to know and i have heard many persons saying that utm ups is a projection let us first understand that utm ups is not a projection it uses projection for instance if someone says that gps uses satellites but we cannot use the terms gps and satellite interchangeably similarly we cannot use the term projection and utm system interchangeably even though there are a lot of arguments available on this uh, area in many texts but for the most of standard books and standard research papers they will say that utm ups is not a projection it uses the projection projection is a part of this process so it is a process it is a system and it is not a tool at many locations you will find that uh, it is mentioned that utm and ups is a system so either you can say that utm ups system or you can say that utm ups coordinate system or you can say that utm ups grid system or you can even combine the terms coordinate and grid together also so there are number of combinations available you have just to play with the words and you have a number of terms which are available for use of this concept but in any case it is not a projection projection is something that is used as part of this process now coming to the point of ellipsoidal model we have basically four types of model number one is uh, the typical surface of the earth which in geographic terms we say as terrain surface that means the typical topological surface of the earth consisting of the uh, peaks the dips and so on the actual physical surface of the earth that we term as the terrain surface next we have something called spherical model of earth the spherical model of earth is based on the concepts of geometry so it is a geometric model and the ellipse uh, and the geometric model is nothing but basically a sphere because earth is treated as a form of sphere in three dimension circle in three dimension can be termed as a sphere so earth in that model is treated as a sphere next we have something called geoid model g e o i d i repeat g e o i d the geoidal model of the earth is also a geometrical model which to some extent can be termed as the smoothened version of the physical terrain surface of the earth under the geoidal model we have the normalization the smoothing of the typical heights and the typical dips which are otherwise available in the physical surface of the model now having discussed these three models we come to the ellipsoidal model friends we know that earth is neither completely smooth nor it is completely in the form of a geoid in which the depths and heights are averaged nor it is completely a sphere earth surface is basically like an ellipsoid having said so we need to know that ellipsoidal model similar to spherical model is also a geometric model because ellipse is a shape which is regularly studied as part of the geometric studies utm ups system is based on the ellipsoidal model that means it takes into good consideration the fact that earth is flattened at the poles earth is flattened at the north pole as well as at the south pole the next reason of using utm ups system is that this system is based on decimal system it is a decimal system it is based on metric calculations and that is why it becomes easier to use compared to the typical latitude longitude degree minutes and second scenario that we are using otherwise for the geographic grid system the next reason is that the measurements as part of this system are very much precise we will just see if time permits we will also do the calculations also how we can calculate any location on earth and the measurements are accurate up to a distance of up to 1 meter now just imagine the dimensions of the earth that we just discussed during the beginning and the point that we can measure up to an accuracy of 1 meter so it is quite quite a precise calculation and easier to use 
GPS systems also return data as we have seen in the pre-lunch session also. GPS also supports UTM, UPS and in fact uh, it transfers the data in the form of UTM coordinates only. And obviously given all these reasons, this happens to be the most prevalent grid system used in the GIS. Before we actually start the discussion of UTM UPS system, we need to know something about projections. As such, the dedicated discussion of this session is not going to be on projections, but because projections happen to be a part of this discussion, so we will be discussing slightly about the projections also. Basically, we have three families of projections. Number one, planar projections, which are taken on a plane sheet. Number two, cylindrical projections, which are going to be of area of our interest because when we will be talking about UTM and UPS, we will be talking about cylindrical projections. And thirdly, the conical family of projections. Friends, again, it is noteworthy that I am not saying it is a planar projection or cylindrical projection or a conical projection. What I am saying is that these three are a family of projections. So why are we using this term family? Obviously, the first thing that comes to our mind is that because it is a family, so it consists of multiple members, the members of the family. For example, if we are talking about conical family of projections, we have oblique projection. You can see that the cone is placed on an oblique angle. The equatorial projection, the transverse projection. So accordingly, we have conical oblique, conical equatorial, conical transverse. And that's why it creates a family of conical projections. Similarly, we have cylindrical oblique, cylindrical equatorial, and cylindrical transverse. Again, creating a family of cylindrical projections. Obviously, our focus for the current discussion will be only on the cylindrical projections. As we have seen in the previous slide also, cylindrical, planar, and conical are a family of projections. Moving on the same lines, the same thing has been represented a bit differently. If we see the cylindrical projection normal, what we will come to know is that the axis, the horizontal axis shown by the dark black line in the center of the cylinder is aligned with the equator. That is the normal cylindrical projection. In the next figure, it is shown that the dark black line in the center of the cylinder is perpendicular to the equator. In other words, it is aligned with the prime meridian or the international date line. That means the 180th degree meridian. In the third figure, we can see the oblique projection which we have seen in the previous slide also. Similarly, for a plane surface, we have polar equatorial or oblique projections. We will be focusing on cylindrical projections because when we are talking, why we will be focusing on cylindrical projections because when we, when we are talking about UTM and UPS system, uh, we have to see that, okay, for the time being, let us take this term UTM, UPS. For first instance, let us keep the term UPS aside. We are left with UTM. The full form of UTM is Universal Transverse Mercator. If we divide this term into three parts, we get number one, universal, number two, transverse, and number three, mercator. The word mercator comes into the picture because it was name of a geographer, a German geographer, on whose name uh, this projection was designed. Basically, that projection was designed as old as in the year 1570, 1570. So basically, the Mercator projection, which was given by the geographer Mercator, used a cylinder. That means the Mercator projections are cylindrical projections. So I suppose we are able to correlate at least these two terms. Number one, the cylindrical projection, and number two, the Mercator projection. Secondly, UTM says that it is not just a Mercator projection, but it is a transverse Mercator projection. Now the word transverse comes into the picture because the projection used by UTM is not the normal cylindrical projection, neither the normal cylindrical projection nor the oblique cylindrical projection, but it is the transverse cylindrical projection. That is why we come to the word transverse Mercator. So when we are talking about UTM, we have universal transverse Mercator Mercator, how it comes into the picture, transverse, how it comes into the picture, and finally the word universal. Friends, as said during the beginning of the discussion itself, that UTM as such is not a projection by itself. Basically, it is a system which uses the transverse Mercator projections. And that is why this universal word comes into the picture. 
because this projection is supposed to provide the locational facility for the entire earth and that is why this word universal comes into the picture universal uh, can be interpreted in two terms number one the projection has been used universally that means the projection has been used entirely on earth by different systems as we have seen in the second slide also that remote sensing gps aerial photography all these systems are using uni uh, utm and secondly because we want to differentiate transverse mercator projection from the system so these are the two reasons why universal word comes into the picture having said so let us go a bit deeper just imagine that earth is converted into a globe mathematically speaking this will be a conversion of a three dimensional object to another three dimensional object because we know that earth is three dimensional and a globe is also three dimensional so basically it is a 3d to 3d conversion why we have done this conversion because we cannot measure the earth directly so we need one mechanism by which we can measure the earth which simulates the earth now given that three dimensional globe just imagine that a source of light for example a bulb is kept at the center of the earth accordingly as you can see in this figure we will have something called mnemonic projection similarly if the source of light is kept at the south pole or for that matter any one pole the projection that we will get on a plane right at an infinite position the projection that we will be getting on a plane surface will be called orthographic projection now why we are discussing about mnemonic stereographic and orthographic projection is that when we are talking about utm the projection which is actually used is the mnemonic projection that means it is simulated as if the source of light is kept at the center of the earth but at the same time we need to keep in mind having said that the source of light is kept at the center of the earth is true just for the purpose of simulation mathematically speaking if we are keeping the source of light at the center of the earth we will not be able to get the projections which actually we are willing to get the projections that actually we want to get so mathematically speaking we cannot say that uh, for uh, utm we are actually keeping the source of light at the center of the earth and then we are getting the projections but at the same time we need to understand that roughly it simulates the behavior as if the source of light is kept at the center of the earth so we can say that utm uses cylindrical projection just a quick recap of what we discussed so far number 1 utm uses cylindrical projection number 2 utm uses mercator projection number 3 utm uses transverse uh, mercator projection number 4 it simulates the behavior of mnemonic projection and before we proceed further uh, let me also add that for the other part we are talking about utm and ups for the other part ups ups stands for universal polar stereographic and the word stereographic derives from the stereographic projection that we just studied so we can say that utm uses mnemonic projection and ups uses stereographic projection now this diagram has just been included to emphasize that just mercator projection or just cylindrical projection is not equivalent we can have mercator projection which is different from this cylindrical projection and vice versa for example in this diagram you can see that the first one is the mercator projection the simple mercator projection used by the uh, geographer mercator in the year 1569 and the second one is cylindrical projection even the first one is also a cylindrical projection but the second one has been modified by uh, another geographer called miller and you can see the area of greenland in the first diagram it just touches the boundaries of the map and in the second diagram in the miller cylindrical projection it is a bit away from the margin of the map why i am emphasizing this is that just mercator projection or just any cylindrical projection will not work for utm now let us come to the utm ups process utm divides the earth from 84 degree north to 80 degree south into 60 numbered vertical zones that are each 6 degree of longitude width 
zones are numbered starting at 180th meridian eastward each zone is divided into rows or sections of 8 degree of latitude except the northernmost section which is of 12 degree to allow the coordinate locations to be positive utm uses two primary ordinate starting points a at equator and b at 10 million meters south of equator except the northernmost part each section occupies 10000 meter and for each 60 longitudinal zones a separate mercator projection is applied to reduce the distortion probably having read the points on this slide will not be sufficient enough to understand the utm ups process so let me explain this thing diagrammatically first of all we take a sphere but as we just discussed that we are not considering the spherical model of the earth so let us remove the spherical model of the earth second we have said that we will be talking about the ellipsoidal model of the earth the ellipsoidal model of the earth basically emphasizes the fact that it is flattened at the poles as you can see here it is flattened at the poles this is north pole this is south pole now what utm does is we have equator at 0 degree moving from the equator towards southwards we have a latitude at 80 degree similarly we have a latitude moving towards north from the equator at 84 degree we say that this is 84 degree n and this is 80 degree s respectively for north and south what the utm says is first of all you ignore this portion that means the portion which is below 80 degree south and the portion which is above 84 degree north for the remaining portion the system that is used for location is called utm and for the shaded portion that means the portion of the north pole and the portion of the south pole the system that is used for locationing is called uh, ups and that is why the word p for polar comes into the picture because this system is used for the poles so as we have broken the term utm into three parts universal transverse mercator similarly we can divide this term into three parts ups universal polar stereography we just talked about mnemonic is a mnemonic projection and stereographic projection so basically uh, ups is using stereographic projection and u is for universal and p is for pole emphasizing the fact that ups is used for the two poles the north pole and the south pole now for this portion of the earth that means from 80 degree south to 84 degree north we start considering the latitudes with a width of 8 degree that means for moving from 0 degree to 80 degree we are creating latitude bands and the width of each of those bands is 8 degree that means mathematically speaking if we have to move from 0 to 80 degree the total distance that we will be traveling will be 80 degree and the width of each band will be 8 degree so if we divide 80 degree by 8 degree we will get 10 which is nothing but the number of the latitude bands that means we have band 1 band 2 band 3 band 4 and so on up to 10 bands similarly as we have done for the southern hemisphere we are doing the same thing for the northern hemisphere but instead of moving from the equator towards the south pole we will be moving towards the north pole so starting from equator again let us consider a band of again 8 degree width and we keep on drawing the bands the number of bands will remain same for the southern hemisphere we have considered 10 bands similarly for the northern hemisphere also we will consider 10 bands but as you can see instead of 80 degree south here we have written 84 degree that means the nine bands out of 10 in the northern hemisphere 
out of 10 bands, 9 bands will have a width of 8 degree and the 4th band will have a width of 12 degree which is nothing but 8 plus 4. Because when we will be starting with 8 degree bands, we will be reaching 80 degree. So for the last band, we are adding the 4 degree. So it will go up to the 84 degree, giving us the last band width of 12 degree. <coughs> now, the obvious question is, that for the south pole, if we are considering the starting point as 80 degree south, then why not for the north pole also, we are considering 80 degree north. Why we are considering 84 degree north, or for the same matter, why we are not considering 84 degree south. The answer is very simple. We know that the southern portion of the pole, that means the south pole, is entirely covered with Antarctica. Whereas this is not the case for the northern pole. That means when the UT and UPS system was designed, the, the designers insisted on the fact that let us consider this portion to be covered on this part only. In other words, we can say that considering the UPM and U, the UTM and UPS, the portion that is left from 80 degrees south to the exact south pole. Let us say this is 80 degree south latitude and this is the south pole. The portion left in between will be 10 degrees. Because we know that if this is the earth and we start moving from north pole to the south pole, the total distance will be 180 degree. And for the remaining 180 degree, we will be moving on the other side of the earth. That means back from south pole to north pole. So on one side, we have a distance of 180 degree. That means from 80 degree south latitude to the south pole, we have a difference of 10 degree so that this portion is of 90 degree and this portion is also of 90 degree. So basically it will be 90 plus 90 and similarly for the back side of the earth, 90 and 90, which is nothing but 90 into 4, which gives us 360 or otherwise 180 into 2, which gives us 360. So coming to our original discussion, the difference is 10 degree and similarly for the northern hemisphere, we have a difference of, this is the north pole and this is 84 degree north. 90 minus 84 gives us 6. That means for UPS, the southern hemisphere has more area to be covered, whereas in the northern hemisphere, the area to be covered is 4 degrees less than the southern hemisphere. And what is the reason? The reason is that the geographers decided to accommodate the Antarctica in this portion only. That is why we have, uh, that is why they have kept this area more compared to the northern hemisphere. Now, having understood one part of the entire process, why are you saying one part? Can I continue? Yes, yes. Now, why I am saying one part? Because in the beginning itself, we discussed that if we want to create a grid, we need to have two dimensions, the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So far, we have discussed about only the latitudes, that means the horizontal portion, or in other words, the x coordinate. Now, what about the y coordinate? So, what about the vertical position? For that, again, let us consider the earth. Let me continue with this portion itself. We have Earth, the ellipsoidal model of the Earth, this portion above 84 degree north and this portion below 80 degree south has already been considered as part of UPS, the portion that was shaded earlier. So you have again shaded it. For the remaining portion, we are considering the vertical bands similar to orange fruit. In orange fruit, we see that the pieces of orange are like this. Such type of pieces we are considering for this portion. The thing that we need to remember is that the width of this portion is 6 degree. Then the circumference of Earth, the circumference of equator is 360 degrees. 
and we are creating vertical zones, each 6 degree wide. How many zones will be created? The answer is very simple, 360 degree divided by 6 degree, which gives us 60. That means, when we have divided the earth horizontally, we had 10 plus 10, 10 in the northern hemisphere and 10 in the southern hemisphere. So the total number of latitude bands, the horizontal bands was 20. And when we are dividing the earth vertically, we have a total of 60 bands. Technically, we are called zones. So we have two terms coming into the picture. Number one, latitude bands, which are horizontal. The quantity, the figure is 20. Similarly, vertically, we have 60 zones, each resembling a piece of an orange. And the width of each of those pieces is 6 degrees. So having seen those diagrams, we can again have a look at this slide. And this time, this will provide us with a more clear picture of the UTM and UPS process. Let us just go through this slide again, keeping in view the diagrams that we have just seen. Point number one, UTM divides Earth from 84 degree north and 80 degree south into 60 numbered vertical zones that are each of 6 degree of longitudinal width. Number two, zones are numbered starting at 180th meridian eastward. We have just seen that vertically the earth is divided into 60 zones. Now where to start from? Because horizontally we always have the reference of equator. Equator is at the center of the earth and we can always start from equator as the reference point as the starting point. But vertically given the fact that all longitudes intersect each other at North Pole as well as South Pole. We do not have any other option. So the starting point that has been chosen for the numbering of the zones is the 180th meridian. And as we know, 180th meridian is nothing but the international date line, which is also called the anti-meridian. It moves from North Pole to South Pole and we know that when it moves from South Pole to North Pole back, covering the entire Earth, circling the entire Earth, it passes from Greenwich Meridian, which is called the Prime Meridian. At that time, it is uh, when it passes from England, it is called the Prime Meridian. So starting from 180th Meridian or the Anti-Meridian or the International Date Line, we start numbering the zones eastward. That means first zone will be 1, second will be 2, third zone 6 degree wide will be 4, next will be 6 and so on till we have completed till we have circled the entire earth with 60 zones. Each zone is divided into rows or sections that means horizontal latitude bands of 8 degree of latitude except the northernmost section which is of 12 degree and we have also seen the reason behind it. To allow coordinate locations to be positive. Now coming to the point uh, how we can reference the intersection of latitude bands and zones, there are two points which have been considered to be treated as the starting points. Number one, if we have to move northwards from equator, then equator is taken as the reference point. And the values will be obviously positive because we are moving northwards from the equator. But if we have to calculate something towards south of equator, in that case, again, if we are starting from equator, similar to the northern hemisphere, the values will become negative. So in order to avoid the negative values, the starting point south of equator has been treated as the 80 degrees south latitude, which is uh, treated as the second starting point. At the northernmost part, each section occupies 10,000 meters because uh, we have just seen that uh, the northernmost part is treated of a latitude band of 8 degree, it consists of 12 degree. So that is why it uh, covers more part. For each 60 longitudinal zones, a separate mercator projection is applied to reduce distortion. Typically, in any kind of projection, what is done is once the projection is applied, the work is over. And that is the reason why generally it doesn't give good accuracy. As we have seen in the case of conical projection, as we have seen in the case of 
other symmetrical projections or even in the case of planar projections once we have given the projection we work it over but in case of utm and this also refers to the reason why the accuracy given by utm utm system is very precise each of these vertical bands is again treated individually and for each of these zones we have again a projection that means for the 60 zones we have projection 60 times and for the 60 projections technically we, we can have two type of projections for example if this is the zone either we can have a projection on a plane surface like this that means this is the point where the plane surface is tangent to our zone this is called tangent projection but utm does not use this kind of projection utm uses something called secant projection in case of secant projection if this is the zone the projection is done like this that means the plane is supposed to pass it is supposed to cut through the vertical zone giving us the more accurate because as we have seen in case of each zone if the projection surface is here naturally as we keep moving away from the point of tangency the distortions will increase the accuracy will decrease similarly if we are keeping the tangent point the point of tangency away from the actual projection that we need to have the accuracy will decrease this is the reason why we are not using the tangent projection and why we are using the secant projection and th this is also the reason why in the beginning itself we said that uh, uh, utm is not a projection it uh, it, it in itself is not a projection it uses projection and in fact it does not use just one projection it uses a set of projections the 60 projections each for each particular zone so the total number of projections that will be used by utm system will be 60 now coming to the naming of these latitude bands because we have already numbered the vertical zones first zone is number 1 number 2 number 3 that means we can identify each zone uniquely by its number from 1 to 60 now as far as the horizontal latitude bands are concerned they are also named and for naming them it is quite interesting scenario they have been named using alphabets from A to Z. Now the total number of alpha. This is again the play of figures. The total number of alpha Z alphabets from A to Z we have is twenty six. The total number of bands in the southern hemisphere is ten. Similarly, the total number of bands in the northern hemisphere is also ten. That means we can use ten plus ten of these twenty six characters. now the point is that the naming is started from 80 degrees south latitude and this naming is started with the alphabet c that means the lower most band will be called c the next band will be called d e f g h and so on the band which will be just below the equator will be named m moving onwards a b c d e f G H I J K L M. Next one will be N. So this is a good coincidence that when we have reached the northern hemisphere, the first name of the band coincidentally that we are using also starts with L. And this also becomes a mechanism by which we can remember that given the fact that uh, uh, we are talking about uh, latitude band L, immediately what should come to our mind is that we are talking about the northern hemisphere. Not only about the name L, any English alphabet beyond L will be in the northern hemisphere, and this will go up to X. So we have started from A. Sorry, we have started from C, and we have reached X. Now the question is, what about A and B? Because we have started from C. and we have these up to x what about y and z these four names have been used to for the 
southern hemisphere, uh, south pole, and two would have been used for the north pole. Now the twist is, if you see from C to M, the total number of English alphabets is not 10. The total number of alphabets from C to M, from C to M, is 11. Similarly, the total number of alphabets from N, because the next alphabet after M is N, from N to X is again 11. But we have also already seen that the total number of bands is 10. So how come this number be 11? The twist is that for the southern hemisphere, one letter has been removed. Similarly, for the northern hemisphere also, one letter has been removed. And which are those two letters? One is I and the second one is O. These two letters have not been removed just to ensure that each letter from A to Z is covered. That is a little coincidence, that each letter from A to Z is covered. These two letters specifically have been removed because when we are talking about UTM, when we are talking about geoinformatics, when we are talking about remote sensing, GPS, GIS, or UTM, UPS, we are working with computers. We are not using a conventional cartographic system. We are talking about the geographic information system in which we cannot rule out the root of computers. And when we are talking about computers, computers use a binary system which have one and zero. So the scientists thought that if we are using O, it will look very much similar to zero. And if we are using I, because I have represented I like this, it may be represented like this also. It will look very much similar to one. This is the reason why we have removed I and O. One letter has been removed from the southern hemisphere, one letter has been removed from the northern hemisphere. So this is nothing but 11 minus 1, 11 minus 1, 10 and 10. And we know that we have 10 bands in each hemisphere. So this is 10, this is 10, the 10 bands in the southern hemisphere, the 10 bands in the northern hemisphere, plus 2 letters used for the south pole plus two letters used for the North Pole, plus two, the letters which have been ignored, I and O. This should give us a total of 26. We can see 10 plus 10 is 20, and two into three is six, which gives us a total of 26. This is the diagrammatic representation of what we have seen on the whiteboard. And again, you can see that a small portion of the earth at the North Pole has been removed. It has been removed for UPS. That means the portion that has been removed will be, technically speaking, it will be six degrees of the portion from 84 degree north latitude to zero degree. That means the exact North Pole. Now, continuing the discussion of UTM UPS process for polar regions beyond areas covered by UTM, we have something called universal polar stereographic. The grid that we just discussed as part of our discussion of UTM itself. UPS divides polar regions into concentric zones. That means circle contained with another circle and then splits them into two equal halves, east to west at longitude 0 degree and 180 degree. Zone halves are designated as follows. For the northern hemisphere, the western half is called grid zone Y. For the northern hemisphere itself, the eastern half is called grid zone Z. And we have already seen that when we are numbering, uh, sorry, when we are naming from C to X, X comes in the northern hemisphere. So Y and Z are continued in the Northern Hemisphere itself. So it becomes the continuity with X, Y, Z. Similarly, in the Southern Hemisphere, when we have started with C, the South Pole contains A and B. The Eastern part is called B and the Western part is called A. So the continuity remains from A to Z. A in the Southern Hemisphere, on the South Pole specifically, to Z in the Northern Hemisphere, to be more specific, at the North Pole. 
Alternatively, UTM and UPS provide the global coverage with minor distortions. Minor distortions because each time we are using the second projection, we have just seen that for each vertical zone, we are applying a second projection. But we need to keep in mind that similar to a piece of orange, wherein it seems that the edges of the orange piece seem to converge at the north pole and the south pole of that piece. Similarly, we have the problem with each of the 60 zones uh, considered for the UTM. This is the diagrammatic representation of the world UTM zones. You can see here they have numbered fr uh, from one, but they have indicated the numbers after skipping two numbers. That means one, two, three, and then they have indicated six. In between, we have two zones, then they have indicated nine. But we can see that the number one and similarly, the number 60 towards the end of the map, they will coincide with what we otherwise call 180th meridian or the international date line. And you can also see that for the area where England is located, for the area where England is located, the zone number comes to around 30. And it should be so because the total number of zones is 60. And if you are taking half of it, it should be 30. So it coincides with our conventional system of latitude and longitudes as well. Now I have included another diagram which is a bit more complicated compared to this diagram. This is the same diagram but this contains UTM numbers from 1 to 60 as well as the latitude bands named from C to X. Specifically, I would like to draw your attention at zone number 31, 32 and 33. We can see that compared to the other zones, these zones have been expanded. That means instead of 6 degree, these zones have been considered for either 12 degree or for 9 degree. This is so because you can see for the zone numbered 32 and 33, there is an island in between. That means what we have studied is just the theoretical explanation of the UTM-UPS process. But practically speaking, as with the case of considering the more area of South Pole, instead of taking uh, uh, instead of taking 84 degrees south, we have taken 80 degrees south just to accommodate Antarctica. Similarly, here also to accommodate the island, specifically Norway has been accommodated. They have again changed the width of the zones. That means there are a few exceptions with the UTM-UPS process also. How to denote UTM and UPS? We have already discussed this. We have a grid zone, which is nothing but a combination of zone and a latitude band. A latitude band is something horizontal and a zone is something vertical. Latitude band is 8 degrees, is having a width of 8 degrees and zone is having a width of 6 degrees. The total number of latitude bands is 20, 10 plus 10 and the total number of zones is 60. Zone is divided, uh, zone is defined as the earth divided into 60 zones. Latitude band we discussed segmented into 20 latitude bands, each latitude 8 degree high, lettered from C to X, omitting the letters I and O. And again, you can see that uh, this I and O seems quite similar to what we conventionally write as 1 and 0, respectively. The typical format of writing the UTM UPS location is in the format wherein the zone is written first and it is followed by the latitude band. For example, if we are talking about, let us say, zone 11 and let us say the latitude band C. So I will not write C11. As a matter of convention, as a matter of international standard, it will be written as 11C. 11 will be the zone number. This is very simple because anything which is numeric will be the zone number. And anything which is alphabet character will be the latitude band. So it will be written as 11C. That means the 11th zone and Cth band. Now comes the twist. 
if we have to denote the UTM values, we have two options. Number one, append a hemisphere designator. And number two, supply the grid zone. Now, what is the difference? Suppose we are writing something like 11n. The interpretation could be that we are talking about 11th zone, no problem. But what about n? n could be interpreted two ways. Number one, we are talking about northern hemisphere. Because we have been used to the conventional system of latitude and longitude in which n is used to denote northern hemisphere. So number one, it can denote northern hemisphere. And number two, it can denote the actual latitude band n, which also happens to be in the northern hemisphere. So, so far, no problem. But let us consider the case of S, 11S. N onwards, we have any letter which is in the northern hemisphere. So we have something like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G, K, L, M, N. N onwards, we are in the northern hemisphere. N, O, P, Q, R, S. So if we are writing 11S, S could be interpreted two ways. Either we are talking about S as the southern hemisphere or we are talking about the latitude band S. That means there is the problem now. So in order to resolve this problem, one of the two systems has to be used. Either we have to specifically mention that we are talking about the hemisphere wherein we can use only two letters. N indicating the northern hemisphere, S indicating the southern hemisphere and in turn this single N will cover all latitude bands from n to x. Similarly, for s, it will cover all the letters from c to m. So that is one convention. And the second convention is that we are actually using the name of the latitude band. Obviously, the convenient way would be to use the latitude band name itself. But uh, in research papers, in textbooks, everywhere, both of these systems have been used quite frequently. So uh, there is a bit of twist, but it just needs to be remembered that we have to go to the legend table and we have to confirm which kind of system is being used before we are actually interpreting the uh, location. This diagram we have already seen. Now there are just a few characteristics of UTM and UPS process. Actually, if we have to talk about UTM and UPS, you can talk for 24 hours and still you will have many things to be talked about UTM and UPS. But because we are uh, just talking about the basics of the UTM UPS process, just to make you understand what the process is and how it uses the projection and why it is accurate and how it reduces the distortion and how it is named. Let us discuss a few of the characteristics of this process. Number one, it is a conformal projection. And we know that conformal projection means a projection which maintains the shapes and the angles. So it will not maintain the distance and the area. Number two, we already discussed that it is based on the ellipsoidal model of Earth. In all cases of the UTM UPS process, SF remains nearly one. SF is the scale factor, and we know, based on our experience of GIS, that nearer the scale factor is to one, more accurate projections we are able to get. To be very much specific, the scale factor SF that we are dealing with in the UTM UPS process is 0 0.9996, which is as good as one. And this also happens to be the reason why the distortions in the UTM UPS process are quite less. The amount of distortion is just one minus 0 0.9996. All measurements in the UTM-UPS process are in meters. They are in northings and eastings. Again, we have shortage of time, so we will not be discussing about northings and eastings. But they are in the terms of northings and eastings, and they are correct to uh, uh, they, they are correct to within one meter. Each of the bands is divided six times. First, they have uh, ten thousand square meter. Then we have such 100 cells, then each of these 100 cells is again divided, then again divided. This division takes place six times, and finally we are left with one meter by one meter portion of the earth. 
And this is the reason why this process is very accurate. As I already discussed, though this is a debatable point, but there are many good text research papers available which say that it is not a projection, it is a grid system. It is a system, it is a coordinate system. And it uses a set of projections 60 times for each vertical zone. And the type of projection that is used for each of these 60 zones is second projection. It is not a tangent projection. Now again comes a beautiful point. What comes first? The projection or the grid? Because we have been talking about the projections also and we have been talking about the grid also. And the answer is very simple. First comes the grid and then we take the projection of that grid. First comes the grid and then comes the projection. Basically, it is the grid that is projected onto the plane surface. So obviously, grid comes first. UTM UPS process uses horizontal position representation. That means it will give the location in X and Y coordinates and it will not treat the Z value. That means if someone is standing in an area of the earth which is one meter by one meter, UTM UPS process will give the precise location with an accuracy of one meter about that point in X and Y coordinates, but it will not deal with the height of that person or height of the building or height of that tree. So it is not a vertical position representation. It represents the position in horizontal system. Some exceptions are there as we discussed for uh, band number 31, 32, uh, sorry, for uh, zone number 31, 32, for Norway, for uh, North Pole, instead of 80 degree North latitude, we have considered 84 degree North latitude. So some exceptions are there. And why area of northern pole is kept smaller, we, have, we already discussed. Area of northern pole is kept smaller or we can say that the area of southern pole is kept bigger to accommodate Antarctica in the southern pole. Just a brief history. Initially, it was created by National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which is headquartered in a city called Virginia at USA. This, process, this system was created as early as in 1940s. It uses universe transverse Mercator projection. The transverse Mercator projection itself is a variant of Mercator projection it, because it is, the fa it is a member, it is a part of the family of Mercator or cylindrical projections. And the Mercator projection itself was originally developed by a Flemish geographer. That means he was a Dutch German and he was also a cartographer and his name was Gerardus Mercator. And this was done as old as 1570 AD. Before we wind up, let us take a quick practical example of how we can convert a longitude to zone value. There are three rules that we need to keep in mind. Number one, treat west longitude as negative and east longitude as positive. We know that India lies in the eastern hemisphere. In addition to many other countries, so if we are converting any longitude value, let us say for India, let us, uh, to be more specific, let us take example of Chandigarh city itself. Approximately a longitude of 76 degree passes from Chandigarh city. Because India lies in the Eastern Hemisphere, so we will take this figure 76 as a positive value. That means plus 76 and we will not take it as minus 76. Add 180 degrees to this value. Madam, this PPT is projected. So what we are doing is basically we are opening a calculator. We are taking 76. We are adding 180 to it. Step one, 76, we have treated it as a positive value because India lies in the Eastern Hemisphere. We are adding 180, second step. This converts the longitude to a number between zero and 36 degrees. The answer we are getting is 256. It is a number between zero and 360. Now comes the last and the third step. Divide by six and round up to the next higher number. So we will be dividing 256 by we will be dividing 256 by 6 the answer that we are getting is 42.6667 and we are supposed to round it to the next higher number so 42.6667 
will be treated as 43. It will be treated as 43. Now let us just to confirm, let us go back to the UTM zone numbered maps that we have seen. We can see that the zone number 43 passes from India almost from the location where Chandigarh is located. Forty three zone number, it is passing from India. This is just to depict two things. Number one, the zone numbers are numbered eastwards. You can see 10, 11, 12. It is moving towards east. That means towards the area or the uh, or the hemisphere of the earth where India is located. So after 19, we will have Europe. After that, we will have Asia. After that, we will have India, wherein 43 comes. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 19, 20, 30, 43. We will find India. And at the same time, you can see the top edge of this diagram. 66 degree west, 72 degree west. Again, this W indicates that we are talking about the Western Hemisphere. And 66, 72, 78, each of these values is the conventional longitudinal values. And in fact, this also brings us to uh, our attention to one more point that each vertical zone of the UTM UPS process, each zone consists of six longitudes. This is nothing but what we earlier said that each zone has a width of six degree. So it is one and the same thing. Again, we can take one example. Let us say, see from 90 degree west to 96 degree west, let us choose one value. Let us say 92 degree west, 92 degree west. Now, because we are talking about the Western hemisphere. So instead of considering the value 92 as positive, we will be treating it as a negative value. So again, let us open the calculator. It will be 180. This time it will be minus 92. Earlier it was plus 76. This time it will be minus 92. Minus 92. We are getting some value. We are supposed to divide this value by 6. And then we are supposed to round it. When we divide it by 6, we get 14.6667, which is nothing but 15. And we can see that the zone number between 90 degree west and 96 degree west is 15. So these are just uh, small examples and probably the things that coming that might be coming to your mind would be that uh, uh, given the fact that we have seen the examples of converting longitudes to zones, can we do the same thing for converting latitudes to the latitudinal bands? The answer is no. Because there is a lot of calculation, there are a lot of geometrical calculations and mathematical calculations which are involved. And what is the reason why this calculation for longitudes is simple and the calculation for latitudes is difficult? The answer is very much obvious and it, it is dependent on the geography of the earth. The reason is the length of all longitudes is equal. We can say that all longitudes, they start from North Pole and they end at North Pole. That means the length of all longitudes is same. They intersect, it intersect at the North Pole. But the counterpart, if we are talking about latitudes, the length of equator, as we know, is more than the length of any other latitude. That means, as we are moving from equator to the North Pole, or if we are moving from equator to the South Pole, the length of latitudes keeps on decreasing. And at North Pole, it becomes zero. At South Pole, also, it becomes zero. So this is basically the reason why the calculations for latitudes are not as easy and convenient as we have seen in the case of conversion of values for longitudes and zones. Thanks, friends. I suppose I was uh, able to clear what the UTM UPS process is and what it is not. That is also important. And probably if in the domain of geoinformatics or GIS or remote sensing or GPS, if we have to deal with UTM and UPS, we just need to keep in mind this basic diagram that we have seen today. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to address those questions. Questions, please.